So like a bar of soap, but lotion. Hi guys and welcome to Whole Elise. I'm Elise and today we're trying out lotion bars. So a lotion bar is just lotion or a moisturizer, but in a solid form. The point of these is that they're solid at room temperature, but when you apply them to your skin, your body heat alone is enough to melt the lotion and that's how you moisturize. Well, that's the theory at least. At this time, I feel like I've built up enough DIY experience to be able to give you the full scoop when it comes to products like these and whether or not it's worth your time, money and effort. So stay tuned if you want to know how to make your own lotion bars and also whether or not this is something that you should consider doing. To make our lotion bars, we'll use a combination of butters and wax. Shea butter has a number of benefits for the skin, including boosting collagen production, cell regeneration, reducing the appearance of stretch marks, scars and wrinkles. Avocado butter is packed full of vitamins A, D, E and fatty acids. It's the softest of our butters, that's light texture is easily absorbed and spread across the skin. Cocoa butter forms a protective layer on our skin, preventing the moisture from escaping and improving elasticity. It even contains photochemicals that can prevent against the sun's harmful UV rays. Candelilla wax is a vegan alternative to beeswax that solidifies our lotion so that we can form it into bars. Feel free to use whatever wax you have available. So the thing about lotion bars is that there's no water in the mixture, so there's actually nothing to dilute all of the butters and the oils and the waxes you use, um, which is great. It means that you're getting something that's very nutrient rich and incredibly moisturizing, but it also means that you're spending a lot of money on those ingredients for a very small yield. This is actually the complete opposite to lotions, which are about 70 to 80% water, meaning that you only need a small amount of, say, butters and oils to make a large amount of lotion. Um, for those of you who've seen my pumpkin spice body butter DIY, which will be linked up here somewhere, definitely do check that out because it's I love it. I would put this in the category of body butters. I mean, it's not the most economical thing to make, but at the same time, it does have its own benefits. So you do keep that in mind if you are interested in making your own lotion bars. When it comes to ingredients, this is also a winner. This is completely all natural. And unlike with lotions where you do have to compromise a bit and use a natural preservative, you don't have to worry about that with lotion bars. And as you can see with my recipe, it's really easy to make this vegan. All you need to do is to substitute the beeswax with any other type of vegan wax. I also feel like this is a really happy medium if you're someone who wants really thick moisturizing ingredients but don't really like to feel greasy. The difference between using body butters and lotion bars is that body butters generally take a couple minutes to sink into your skin, whereas with a lotion bar you're pretty much good to go as soon as you rub it in. To melt, place the lotion ingredients over a gentle heat like a double boiler or bain marie until all the wax is melted. This is probably the most difficulty I've ever had filming a DIY before. From as soon as it's melted, you need to have all of your essential oils lined up, ready to go. You need to have your silicone modes ready to go and you need to pour it in as soon as you can because it will start to set. Vitamin E oil has a wide variety of benefits for the skin and we're also using it as an antioxidant to prevent our lotion bars going rancid. Take this opportunity to also add any other essential oils that you would like to use for fragrance. So I'm not sure how many of you guys know this, but I actually film and edit all of my DIYs myself. The problem with this is that it sets and I mean, it doesn't just set, it sets ridiculously fast. I appreciate you guys probably aren't going to be filming a tutorial as you're making this, but there's even times where you can see on camera where I'm sort of stirring it, or I'm mixing it with a spatula, which is made of silicone and just me putting out the spatula from the liquid to the atmosphere, it's set and it's like, I don't know how you can work with this thing. I mean, unless you are completely dedicated to the DIY, you have no distractions, you can't look away for a minute, everything has to be done so quickly. For the best results in forming our lotion bars, use a silicone or flexible mold that won't damage the lotion bars as you take them out. So, I kid you not, simply by me pouring the warm mixture into the molds, it set on the side that it was poured into. So I probably only got about maybe 70% of the actual lotion into the molds. The rest was stuck on the container that I poured it out of. Ugh. 
It was just a nightmare. I had to reheat that container and then try and pour it back into a mold. I made a kind of Frankenstein lotion bar that had like one part, it was halfway filled up that I had set and then I poured more on. It was just, it seemed very wasteful. Leave to set at room temperature. It should take less than an hour. You're also compromising the ingredients every time you reheat it. Typically speaking, when it comes to butters and waxes, you don't really want to reheat them multiple times. I think within the course of filming this, I probably reheated it like four different times. I was really concerned that the final product would have been ruined. Now, to be fair, um, if I were to remake this recipe, I would definitely use less wax. I wanted to make a firm lotion bar that wasn't going to melt. I mean, we're approaching summer right now, and particularly if you live in warmer climates, um, you want to make sure that your bar is still solid at room temperature, whatever that might be for you. And I was just wary that if I didn't put in enough wax, instead of it being a solid bar, it would kind of be sticky and tacky. Um, and that's just unpleasant to use. So if I were to remake this, I would use less wax, but I'm pretty sure it would still set very, very quickly. Um, it was also a nightmare to clean up. Once again, this is not something that I show on my DIYs because I don't think any of you guys want to see me washing up. I probably spent about an hour washing this up and that was because when this sets, it sets hard and um, there's no real way for you to get the wax off of your utensils or your glasses and containers without using heat. So I pretty much had to fill everything up with hot water and like washing up liquid, wait until it was melted enough for me to try and remove it with a sponge and it probably took about an hour. All of your pots, pans, utensils, you kind of need to wash them up immediately after Otherwise, you'll probably end up in a situation like I had where I'm washing up for about an hour trying to remove the wax. So you can actually make your own lotion bar from start to finish in less than an hour. So I definitely think in terms of ease, this is a great DIY to make. Because they're so compact, you can just pop these into your bag and then you'll have a moisturizer all ready to go whenever you need it. Not to mention, they really don't require much packaging. You could put these in some baking paper or even one of these reusable little tins, making this a great option if you're someone who wants a zero waste DIY. This should melt with your body heat, and it does. It's just a little slower than I would like. I mean, applying it to my skin even now, it's like, I mean, I'm I'm pretty hot. I wouldn't I wouldn't say that I was cold, but it's not really melting fast enough. The reality is, unless your bar is soft to set, um, it's probably going to take a little while for it to heat up enough for you to use it in that capacity. Some people say you can kind of use this like you would a bar of soap, meaning that you can apply it to wet skin as well as dry skin. Um, I have would I had mixed results with that. So it's kind of a toss up between whether or not you want a bar that's firm enough to actually be used in the shower with running water, or you want something that's softer but you can't use it in the shower and it might not be solid at room temperature. You kind of have to kind of get that balance right. I think it's much better to apply it to damp skin or maybe just after you've showered. But what I would say from a hygiene point of view is I don't really know about having like bars of lotion that I'm repeatedly kind of rubbing on my skin and then pulling down and rubbing on my skin again. It just doesn't really seem like it's the best. Considering everything that's going on at the moment um, with things lingering on surfaces, I don't know if I would really want to use a lotion bar while I'm out and about, if that makes sense. So yeah, just bear that in mind. What I would say, however, is that through making this and the fact that I've already made a natural deodorant, and if you haven't seen that video, you can definitely click this link above because I have thoughts on natural deodorants as well. <laughs> I say that this would definitely benefit from being in a container similar to something like a deodorant or a lip balm container where you can kind of just um, push it up when you need it. I think it'd be a lot easier. That way you're not always handing it up every time you want to use it. It's a lot more convenient. But if you guys are actually interested in seeing me make a lotion bar, but more like a stick in a container, um, definitely do give this video a thumbs up. So having said all of that and having my mini rant, I actually do like lotion bars. <laughs> And there is definitely a space for lotion bars in my natural skincare routine. The issue here was just that I was going to make this video a normal tutorial, but when I was making these, I had so many issues and 
complications and just things that I wasn't expecting. I felt that I would have been doing you guys a disservice if I just put this up as a regular tutorial without at least warning you guys that there were some things to look out for. But hopefully now that you guys have the heads up, you should be able to make these just fine. I have included in the description down below some of the things to look out for, so definitely do give that a read if you are interested in making your own lotion bars. And also remember that I will give you this recipe as well as my edited recipe using less wax because I think that that will produce an easier bar to use. Let me know if you guys like seeing, you know, just some of the additional things that happen in my DIYs. Um, <laughs> I don't know primarily I feel like you guys just want to know how to make stuff so I keep it to that but if you guys are interested sometimes in just knowing a little bit of the behind the scenes things and problems that I'm having do let me know in the comments down below and do give this video a thumbs up I have everything from teaching you how to make your own homemade lotions to oil cleansers to face washes to body butters to at this point the list just keeps growing <laughs> so definitely do check some of those videos out and subscribe to my channel with the notifications bell so you know as soon as I drop my new videos thanks for watching if like me you felt heartbreak fear anger and frustration over these last few weeks and let's face it for much longer it can be hard to cope but there's also been an overwhelming show of love and support from across the world if you're wondering what we can do to help please check out the links below in the description. Stay safe, everyone.